title of the message is The Evidence of Your Faith. The Evidence of Your Faith. If you want to go and buy a house, someone's going to ask whether you have evidence that you have the money to buy it. Is that right? What is the evidence of your faith? Now, we know that by grace we have been saved, and this is not by works, lest any man should boast, it says in Ephesians. So we put our faith in the Lord... We put our faith in the Lord for salvation. But faith, it says in James 2, without works is dead. So what is the evidence of your faith? It says in James 2 that even the demons believe and shudder. Okay? So even the demons believe, but their belief is not counted as faith. We're going to talk about the evidence of faith. Because many people say that they believe. You know, you talk to some of the people in the cults and they say, oh, we believe what you do. And I go, no, you don't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The evidence of your faith. Many people say that they believe. But is it true faith? Faith is not the mental consent to doctrinal belief. That's not faith. That's like saying, I believe that the moon is there. I believe that the world is flat or round. It's a mental consent to an idea. But faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is in the heart and faith produces evidence. Hallelujah. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom of God. Not everyone who says that they're a believer has genuine faith. We're going to talk about the evidence of faith. First of all, faith is initiated by God. Faith comes from him. God has spoken in his word and his word produces faith. In Genesis chapter 12, the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Now he was a man who was a nobody really. He had no children of his own. And here God speaks and initiates by his word faith. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And God's covenant with Abraham stands fast even today. Those who curse Israel shall be cursed and those who bless Israel shall be blessed. And God is for Israel because they are the apple of his eye. And, God, and Abram believed the promise and his faith took action. There was evidence that he believed. If you have true faith, your faith will result in action. Genesis 12.4, so Abram packed up and left. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Can you imagine packing up and leaving everything at 75 years of age? 
Some people are thinking about what nursing home they're going to. <laughs> then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and his lot, his brother's son, all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. If your faith is genuine, it will take action. If you have genuine faith in your life, it will result in things happening, in choices that you make. Genuine faith will lead you into the fear of God, into a reverence of God, because you believe that he exists and that he is the rewarder of the unjust and the just. Is there anyone in the room who's ever been disciplined for doing the wrong thing before God? Anyone in the room? My path is very tight. If I stray from the path, the Lord's discipline is there, ready for me. I believe in the Lord and I have the fear of God. I know he's watching me. My faith says, Mark, be careful the way you walk, everything you do. And when God is silent, be even more careful. Because sometimes he lifts his voice from your life, he's silent, to see whether you will keep faith and walk a holy life. Hallelujah or whether you'll get slack and lazy. Being a true Christian is more than just believing a doctrine. It's faith in action. True faith means that you've made Jesus Christ Lord of your life and Master. It affects everything. What does it profit, James 2.14, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? James asks. So someone's saying, I believe, I'm a Christian, but if there's no evidence of the faith, of his faith, is he saved? That's what the Bible's asking. If a brother or sick sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. My question, are you spiritually alive or spiritually dead? If you're spiritually alive... It'll show by the evidence in your life. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not compromise. Hallelujah. Was not Abraham our father, verse 21, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? So God had promised a great nation. God had promised him a son. And then God spoke and said, go up. To Mount Moriah and sacrifice your son his faith in the Lord when he said the Lord will provide to his son he went up on the on the mountain took the knife to kill his son and the angel of the Lord said stop and Abram's faith was accounted to him as righteousness Praise God. You know, some Christians, they're, they're like, you want to vomit, really. I mean, there's no backbone. There's no evidence of their faith. You know, they're like, well, I'm a Christian. I believe in God, but I don't have to do anything. Your faith is dead. Scripturally dead. I don't have to fellowship with anyone. I don't have to pray. I said the sinner's prayer, that's it. 
I'm saved. But faith without works is dead. The works don't save you. They just reflect your belief. If you believe that a restaurant has rats, you're not going to go there. Your faith will be reflected by your action. Amen. If you truly believe in Jesus Christ, your faith will be reflected by your actions. If you don't really believe, hallelujah. So, you're a Christian, but are you like everyone else in the world? Or is there anything that makes you different? Do you seek the Lord before making decisions? Do you pray before taking, before seeking medical treatment? If it doesn't seem humanly possible, do you believe that God can do it anyway? Do you vote for governments who support sexual immorality, abortion, and euthanasia? Or is your faith reflected in your politics? Do you believe that it is important to have righteous government? Yes, we do. Do you avoid putting yourself out there because you don't want to be rejected by family and friends who think that you're a religious fanatic? You know, sometimes we have people and they write in and they say, my ex might see me on your footage. My, my mother might watch. My brother, my sister, I don't want them to know my testimony. Where's your faith? If you're ashamed of him now, he will be ashamed of you later. Amen? Are you willing to suffer rejection because of your genuine faith in Jesus Christ? What is the evidence of your faith when the rubber hits the road? Do you dress immodestly, listen to ungodly music and ungodly movies because you don't think it matters? If you don't think it matters, where is your genuine faith? Because God is holy and it matters before him. Amen. Amen. So when we look at the life of Jesus, we, we see how his faith constantly moved him to action. When the Father was speaking to him, do this, do that, or he was seeing the Father raising the dead, healing, cleansing the lepers. He was doing it. He was doing it. He was a man of action. He set his face to Jerusalem, knowing that they would kill him, believing that he'd be raised from the dead. Action. Ten lepers come to him. They've all got lepers. Maybe their fingers are dropping off, whatever. And he says to them, go and present yourself to the priest, which is like, go to the doctor and tell the doctor that you're healed. Go and present yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice that is necessary for the cleansing of a leper. And as they went, they were healed. That is faith. That's like saying, you've got stage four cancer, now I want you to go to the doctor and tell them that you're healed and have your MRI or whatever done. That's faith. He's in the synagogue, Jesus is in the synagogue and all the religious people are there, all the opposition and there's a man with a withered hand and they're watching. Will he heal 
on the Sabbath. And Jesus knew from the Father that it was time for this man's life to be transformed. And he says to the man with the withered hand, step forward. And the man steps forward. So now he's in front of everyone. Stretch out your hand. Stretches it out. Hallelujah. He, he believed it was God's will to heal that man. And he knew what he was doing could create a situation where they would kill him. And he still did the Father's will. That's faith. That's courage. Look to Jesus. So there's 5,000 men plus women and children. So let's say a crowd of 10 to 15,000 people. Okay, there's a problem. They didn't bring enough food. They've been there three days in the wilderness. So Jesus says, get them all ready for the meal. Sit them in groups of 50. Go on, organize them all. So he sends out his 12 disciples and they have to, or how many disciples he had with him, organize 15,000 people into small groups so they could have lunch. That's faith. Imagine, all he's got is five loaves and two fish and he's like, come on guys, off you go. And they're like, where's the food? Sit them all down at the dining table and believe that God will supply isn't Jesus wonderful? Doesn't it challenge you to step out into the unknown, into the impossible, and believe? You know, in 1 Samuel 1.17, Hannah was depressed. We'd say today she was depressed. She wouldn't eat. She was crying. And uh, her husband's like pulling out his hair you know, you're a wonderful wife, but I can't give you children. She's barren. And they go to the priest, to Eli, and uh, he says to her, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. You see, God spoke through the priest. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight, so the woman went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad. Faith in action. She believed what was spoken and now she's eating. I don't need to be sad anymore. I'm having a baby. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the greatest ways that faith is expressed in the midst of problems is praise is praise you listening anyone in the room got a problem anyone in the room a liar <laughs> when you're in the midst of your problem praise the Lord Romans 4 19 Abraham not being weak in faith, he did not consider. Are you considering your problem all the time? He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving what? Glory to God. I can just imagine Abraham, he's 100 years old, his wife maybe 90 years old, there's just no way they're going to have a baby. And he's standing there outside his tent in the middle of the night with all the stars, his hands are raised and he's giving glory to God. Thank you Lord that my descendants will be like the stars of heaven. And like the sands of the beach, the seashore. Thank you, Father, that you promised and that you're faithful to your promises. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, glorify God. Glorify God. You know, to walk in the Spirit 
is to walk by faith. To walk in the Spirit is to walk by faith. To walk by faith means that the truth of God's Word is the foundation of your actions. The truth of God's Word is the foundation for your actions in life. You're not moved by the flesh, by the natural. You're moved by the living Word of God. And the living Word of God indwells your heart so that you know His will. And the Word of God that indwells your heart is Jesus Christ. To have an effective, personal relationship with Jesus Christ is only possible by the indwelling of the Word of God. Because the Word is Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. When you meditate on the word, Christ indwells your heart in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. The word and Christ are inseparable. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So the word in your heart is what gives forth faith and faith produces action so the condition of your heart where the word indwells is important if your heart has unforgiveness has compromise has resentment is full of lust is disobedient to the father how will the word effectively dwell in your heart? When you read the word, your eyes will be affected spiritually. There's physical blindness, but there's also spiritual blindness. How can you read the word to hear from God while your heart is in darkness of unforgiveness? So we must obey the word so that we can receive the word. Amen. Because God is not mocked. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So be very careful because the word, the, sorry, the world and the devil are fighting against the word in your heart. The desire for riches, for money, which most people have, will fight against the word in your heart. Anxieties will fight against the word. Anxiety will lead to unbelief if you're not careful. So maintaining a faith attitude in your heart, maintaining a pureness of the heart. Praise God, being quick to repent. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. So faith produces. Do you have a problem in your life? Are you responding with faith, giving glory to God that he's answering you? Or are you just considering your problem and your human solutions? Tonight, Turn in faith and believe God and his word, his promises. Do you have addiction? Are you addicted to porn? Is there someone who's hurt you and you're struggling with bitterness? Do you have mental torment, depression? Are you in pain? Do you have cancer? Turn in faith tonight. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and begin to praise him that the breakthrough is now. 
begin to praise him and thank him that he is the miracle working God his name is Jesus let your faith lead to action and begin to praise him praise him let your faith have evidence let it not be mental assent to a, to a doctrine but heartfelt belief in Jesus Christ thank you Lord Father God, I want to thank you and praise you for all the things that you have done over the years, Lord. And I pray tonight, Lord, that you'd work in our hearts genuine faith, that you would speak in our hearts, bringing forth genuine faith, Lord. I pray, Lord, that this faith would lead to action. I pray, Father, that people would become missionaries, people would become pastors, people would become street evangelists, prophets, teachers, that, Lord, people would become good parents, loving their children, bringing them up in the knowledge of the word of God. I pray, Lord God, that the word would produce in their lives, never to be the same again. Thank you, Lord. If you need to repent, just ask the Lord to forgive you. Confess your sins to him right now. In the presence of the Holy Spirit, when you repent, he's here to change your life by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. If you have been whinging, complaining, telling people about your problems as if there was no answer, as if Jesus never existed, repent and turn to him. He's a loving God. He loves you. He's a forgiving and merciful God. Turn and put your faith in him. Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, that by his stripes we are healed. We are forgiven. If you are distant from God, you've strayed from him, you're online or in the room tonight, Turn to him. Put up your hand to him tonight. If you've strayed from him, put up your hand to him. Not to me, but to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I turn to you with genuine faith tonight. Thank you, Lord. I turn to you. Genuine faith. I repent of my sin. I come to Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.